In the deepest zone of the forest, isolated by two towering mountains, a beam of light is seen by all the animals. This beam of light comes from Yu Zi, who died choking on a glass of water and reincarnated as a shining tree that speaks. Upon realizing his situation, Yu Zi is outraged at reincarnating as a plant rather than as a protagonist of a delicious manhwa who would build a harem. Surveying his surroundings, he realizes he's in a forest, amidst two great mountains. He can see and feel things, and the only thing he can move is a small branch at his top. Being in a forest, he fears monsters might attack him. But as a tree, the only monster that really worries and poses a threat to him is the woodpecker. Before he can truly feel fear, he hears a noise from the sky. Looking up, he sees a metal bird, or rather, a commercial airplane. This reassures him as it indicates he's in the current century. He ends up making a quick move with the branch to kill two bees that were bothering him and receives a notification from the system. You have obtained 0.2 evolution points. A projector appears in front of him with information and data about him. When he uses the evolution points he just gained, he manages to increase the number of branches he can use simultaneously. Testing his new arms, he spends a month killing animals in the forest and manages to significantly increase the number of arms he uses simultaneously. He even creates a drill that uses air movement to break a stone. A month has passed, and now he's much stronger. His size has increased considerably compared to normal trees. The roots are absorbing more energy, and the branches are getting stronger. His lifespan is only 20 years, but in that time, Yuzi could even become a world tree. However, Yuzi is not alone. Among his branches, he discovers a secret nest. And it's not just any nest, it's the home of mutant peregrine falcons. These fast and agile birds are a valuable addition to his forces. If Yuzi can tame them and bring them to his side, he'll have his own personal air force. The world around him is different from his previous life. The forest is infested with mutant animals, devouring wolves, giant ants, queen spiders, axe-headed snakes, and even King Kong? Yuzi continues his hunt, collecting resources from the slain monsters to feed the falcon's nest. With an accumulated evolution point, Yuzi decides to strengthen his roots and trunk. Unlike branches, which can be strengthened with just 0.1 point, a root requires a whole point. He imagines that, since the root costs 10 times more, it could be 10 times more efficient than a branch. His goal? Finally being able to move freely through the forest. However, when Yuzi strengthens his roots, the pain is intense. They spread in all directions, like a drill piercing his skin. The original root, once static, now turns into something red and suspicious moving freely. Determined, he tries to move the trunk, but the pain is unbearable, like waxing his sack. He hides that red root, and suddenly hears a noise in the bushes. His combat mode is immediately activated. Upon examining the area, he comes across a wounded fox, with a deep cut on its chest. The wound is dark and likely poisoned, meaning he can't feed the sparrow chicks with the fox's meat. However, a system notification informs that the tree's branches have detoxifying and energizing properties. So, with his tree neurons, he thinks of healing the fox and then killing it, recovering the points he spent on healing it, and still giving its meat to the sparrows to eat, stonks. Before he can execute the fox, it surprises him with a lethal blow that captures Yu Zi's heart, who can't resist and ends up falling for the fox's charm. However, the tree sap not only heals the fox but also evolves it, transforming it into a fire fox. Curious, Yu Zi asks the fox about the reason for its weakened state, and somehow, she manages to communicate, revealing that she was hunted by humans due to the value of her fur. The fox ends up hearing a noise coming from the bushes and flees, leaving Yuzi alert. Shortly after, Yuzi comes across two young humans. He hides and observes them as they approach. To his surprise, they call him, Daddy. It seems their father is buried beneath the protagonist. The sisters came to make an offering in memory of their father. After making an offering and praying to their late father, the sisters decide to take a bath in the lake. Meanwhile, the protagonist, driven by questionable intentions, tries to spy on the girls. However, a tree blocks his view, and any attempt to reposition himself is thwarted by the intense pain that prevents him from moving. Eventually, the sisters leave, promising to return to visit their father's grave. Two weeks later, the canyon, which seemed to be a peaceful place, is now flooded with dangerously strong monsters. The protagonist's falcons are helping him fight these creatures. They are engaged in a frenzied aerial battle against the golden eagle, which incapacitates the falcons with its powerful cry. However, the eagle is caught off guard by the fire fox, which despite its effort, couldn't do much against the eagle, which captures and hurls it violently to the ground. Before the eagle can react, the protagonist intervenes, 
using his ability to instantly defeat the Golden Eagle, gaining 70 evolution points. Since the protagonist began feeding the Falcons with his life essence, they have grown much faster, and the Fire Fox continues to assist him. However, the forest remains a dangerous place, inhabited by high-level monsters like the Eagle. Therefore, the protagonist needs to be more cautious and strengthen himself even further. And to strengthen himself, it is essential to strengthen allies first. Thus, the protagonist feeds them with his slime, also known as life essence. However, the tranquility is abruptly interrupted when a surprise attack severs a large part of him, destroying one of his roots. The attack is the work of the axe-headed snake, a foe much superior to the bird faced earlier. A battle begins. The snake uses the axe on its head to attack, while he defends himself with the remaining roots. Using the points acquired earlier, he enhances his roots, completely immobilizing the snake. With a final blow, he strikes the snake's belly. Despite the great damage, the blow is not enough to penetrate the snake's tough skin. Feeling fearful but persistent, he projects his killing intent onto the snake, forcing it to flee. He wins, but suffers significant damage to his structure, and it is likely that the snake will return even stronger. Evolving in the forest is a challenge, and he is still weak. However, the opportunity to strengthen arises. A screen indicates that he can evolve to the next level, and he accepts without hesitation. His body and those of his pets begin to regenerate and evolve. An intense light spreads throughout the forest. After evolution, he emerges in a new form, the Mutant Willow. The Fire Fox evolves to Stage 7, and the Peregrine Falcons reach Stage 5, acquiring Red Crests. Now stronger, he sends the Falcons in search of the Axe-Headed Snake. They shoot like bullets, and he speculates that with this speed, they may be able to pierce the snake's tough armor. The Fox, now with a more imposing appearance, demonstrates a significant increase in strength. But things are never simple. While inspecting his status panel, he hears voices asking for help. They are the two sisters who visited their father's grave earlier. They flee from a herd of furious monsters, likely attracted by the light emitted by the protagonist before evolving. The reason monsters attack him is because they see him as a source of energy, and whoever devours him will absorb all the energy he possesses. Before the monsters can attack the girls, the protagonist's pets intervene saving them at the last second, and a monster war ensues. The monsters try to advance but are hindered by the roots. Some come close, but they are quickly annihilated. The strongest ones are subdued to obey him. After the battle, a new problem arises, the sisters. He cannot let them go, as they know he is a monster. However, killing them would turn him into a demon tree and attract unwanted attention. His solution is to pretend to be their deceased father. Initially skeptical, they ask him to reveal their names and a secret that only their father would know. With the help of the system, he reveals that one of them is in love with a boy from another village, which makes them believe him a little more. He removes some hair clips he had made and, reflexively, accesses memories of the girl's last moments with their father, perhaps because he was buried under his roots. He feels their souls are intertwined. During the conversation, the sisters reveal that the world is changing, and energy known as magic or spiritual energy is altering the composition of living beings, causing evolution in species. The younger sister feeds the captured wolves, who initially react with hostility but calm down upon seeing the fox. With the situation calmer, he checks his status and discovers that, in addition to a significant increase in strength, he has gained two new abilities, one that creates a mist barrier to confuse creatures and another that generates hallucinogenic smoke, inducing visions. He spreads the mist through the forest and asks the fox to take the sisters back to the village. He has also acquired the ability to evolve old skills using points and spends almost all of them to elevate these skills to level 2. The advancement is so great that on that night the special beast cannot rest, feeling the rise of an extremely powerful being. He tests the effect of the hallucinogenic gas on the wolves, making them see their worst fears, and plans to save points to improve the regeneration ability. His evolution is unstoppable, with roots now over 100 meters deep, reaching unknown caves even for humans. However, Despite his strength, the concern persists. The axe-headed snake is still a danger, and hunting it could attract even more powerful monsters. For now, he decides to wait. The wolves, still under the influence of hallucinogens, begin to bark, and to silence them, he whips them using his branches. The sisters disapprove of this when they see it, and treat the wolves' wounds, creating a kind of bond between them. In fact, they have a great affinity with animals and get along very well with all of them. However, this piece doesn't seem like it will last long. In a distant cave, the snake is recovering and storing energy for its revenge. 
The next day, in the human village, the two sisters were excitedly heading to the mountain, and their grandfather noticed that since their father's death they hadn't shown such excitement. The protagonist sent the fox to fetch them, and it is evident that the relationship between them is becoming closer, to the point where one of the sisters brings manure to Yu Zi, believing it would further strengthen him. On the way back, the weather became cloudy, and unexpectedly, they were attacked by the axe-headed snake. <coughs> Meanwhile, the protagonist was hunting mutant bees to accumulate more points. He gave some of his essence to the falcons that helped him and planned to use the acquired points to evolve his mutant roots. As he enhances them, he feels excruciating pain, as if his body is tearing apart, and from the red roots emerge new black roots with small hairs, more threatening than the normal ones causing fear even in the captured animals. He tested the new root, which moved like a snake through the forest, capturing all the animals it encountered, even interrupting a love declaration between two little pigs. Like an unstoppable beast, he captured and absorbed all the animals, gaining 210 points in moments. He felt powerful, able to track all the monsters with his roots. However, a concern arose. The fox had been gone for a long time to fetch the sisters and had not yet returned. He sent the falcons to search for them, but the fox returned severely injured. He used his life energy to heal her and, when he was about to speak, he heard a noise. Looking up, he saw the snake holding one of the sisters in its mouth with a malevolent look. The snake tried to swallow the sister, but the protagonist was quick and struck its neck with the root, saving the girl. The snake realized it was still no match for the tree and fled. Seeing the injured girl, the protagonist began to infuse life essence into her, in a desperate attempt to save her, investing all his points in this effort. It was found that the other sister had been found and was in the human hospital, in critical condition. The grandfather was extremely worried, as they thought the missing sister had been devoured by the snake. The protagonist released all the monsters he had kept in prison to help in preparing for the fight against the serpent. Recently, Cases of disappearances of planes and ships have become more common. The cause was identified. Groups of mutant crows attacking planes and sea monsters destroying ships. Humans have joined forces to combat these evolved creatures, studying the environment and detecting the spiritual energy of the monsters. A monster with over a thousand spiritual energy already requires the intervention of an entire army, and those with over 5,000 spiritual energy are immune to common weapons. In the region, there are at least 8 energy points above 5,000. One of these points, with over 18,000 spiritual energy, represents extreme danger. After this discovery, we see a snake annihilating a heron. The black cow tries to attack the snake with its horn, but it is useless. The snake is unstoppable, and all attempts to harm it result in defeat. The monsters, however, seek revenge for the girl injured by the snake. A squirrel fights fiercely, tearing a piece from the snake, and a pack of wolves manages to damage its eyes. The fire fox emerges as the final opponent of the snake. They have met before. The first time was a predator-prey relationship, the second when the snake fought with Yu Zi, the third protecting the sisters, and now the fourth attempt. The snake realizes that the fox is growing stronger, and decides she must be eliminated. In the battle, the snake, aiming for a perfect body and supremacy in the food chain, realizes the fox is not yet strong enough to face it. However, the fox, like a raging phoenix, summons the birds to attack the snake. The eight falcons emitted a threatening cry, which intimidated not only the snake but also the fox, who felt the pressure emanating from them. When two objects rub against each other, they generate heat. The friction between the air and the body, at high speed, can produce so much heat that it can burn and lead to death. With this in mind, the falcons developed a new technique, ballistic diving, which would hurt both the enemy and themselves. In the early days of their lives, the mother of the falcons was killed while looking for food, leaving them hungry for days until Yu Zi found them. With the ability to fly through the sky and strengthen themselves, they lived happily until a great sorrow arose. The best way to take revenge was to use their best move to achieve victory. Like a cannon, they launched themselves at the snake. The impact was so strong that it almost threw the fox away, and the snake was dragged meters into the forest. The falcons were were severely injured, and the fox, as she approached, saw a pitiful scene. All her companions were on the ground, but the snake was still alive. As the snake was about to deliver the final blow to the fox, a black trunk protected her. Yuzi emerged from the mist, and the snake immediately understood it was going to die. The first time it fought Yuzi, it managed to eat some branches and evolved to stage 9. The second time, it attacked the sisters because they smelled like him. But now, it wouldn't be able to escape. Yuzi used all his roots to capture the snake and pull it towards him. Face to face with Yuzi, the snake felt only fear. Even so, 
It gathered all its strength to try to fight against the tree. However, already weakened, the snake was repeatedly struck at the spot of the wound made by the falcons. Yu-Z, and Rage, could only think of the girls who died at the hands of the snake. With hatred in his mind, he gathered all the roots into a fist and delivered the final blow. The animals that had fought earlier, now fully wounded, saw Yu-Z, and Rage, repeatedly striking blows on the already dead snake. So many blows were struck that almost nothing was left of it. With only hatred and fury, Yuzi reflected that neither the snake nor he were wrong. In this world, the strong feed on the weak. No matter how much anger one may have, if they are weak, they will not survive. The life lost will become power and nurture new life. But even knowing this, he was still sad. At night, Shaolin's body was left by the fox in the village. As a reward for fighting alongside him in revenge, Yuzi gave them a little life essence. The pack of wolves and the wild cow evolved, the wolves awakened wind attributes and the cow, earthquake attributes. However, the rest of the animals, although greatly increased in power, did not rise in rank or change appearance. The pack of wolves, along with all the other animals, reverently honored Yuzi, wishing to continue by his side. Yuzi was moved and promised to protect them. To survive, one must be strong, strong enough to face everything, strong enough to be feared by all. On that cold, starry night, the battle against the snake seemed not to have happened. Yuzi was immersed in his own body. The falcons patrolled the air while the wolves patrolled the land. The heron, the cow, and the monkey cleaned up the battlefield. The fox watched over, and the squirrel slept. While Yu Zi scolded the squirrel, a light appeared behind him, and in that light, a girl appeared. The light rushed towards him, and as he tried to defend himself with the branches, they passed through the light without effect. As the light approached, he recognized the girl within it as Xiao Qin. She entered a kind of hibernation within him, drawn by the nectar produced by Yu Zi, which has the power to bring souls back, although it is still not very strong. Yu Zi enveloped Xiao Qin's soul with his roots awakening her. But she seems to be no longer the same Xiao Qing as before, with no memories of who she is or of Yu Zi. He feels guilty, thinking that his longing brought her back, even if only as a spirit. He promises to protect her. He then discovers that her sister is still alive in a coma, and the protagonist finds hope of perhaps reviving her. Yu Zi uses a bit of the life essence in her, strengthening her and making her grow a little. Xiao Qing sees her sister's body in a hospital, apparently in a coma, but able to make small movements. After using this power, Xiao Qing becomes exhausted, and Yu Zi suggests that she could revive in Xiao Ling's body in this world. The scene shifts to miles away, where two men atop a foggy mountain discuss their next target, which happens to be the mountain where Yu Zi resides. They are magical beast hunters, and one of them, a hooded man, is an extraordinary, capable of controlling spiritual energy. Extraordinaries are people who can control spiritual energy, but they maximize this ability by gaining powers above humans. Meanwhile, Yu Zi plays with the girl, discovering new abilities like telekinesis, impressed by how quickly she learns. Xiao Qing was killed by wild animals, and the villagers are furious. Yu Zi, however, does not intend to take advantage of the situation to show his power, as fighting against humans is the last option. Their goal is to turn the mountain into their world. Suddenly, it starts raining, and Yu Zi feels a strange spiritual energy, sensing people approaching through the mist. It's the two men from the mountain, who are now traveling on foot, sending a subordinate to fetch two mysterious boys. The hooded man hears screams coming from the village and runs at high speed over the rocks surprising everyone around. Yu Zi is not intimidated by the presence of these men. On the contrary, he wishes to be found to demonstrate his true strength. Xiao Qing attempts to merge her body with that of her sister, blending her soul with hers. To assist in this process, Yu Zi offers a bit of his life essence, while the extraordinary observes Xiao Ling's comatose body. He stands there, observing her, feeling a weak spiritual pressure emanating from the girl's body. People awaken in different ways. Some need spiritual cleansing or soul resonance, and the time varies. Around the girl, he notices that the element she will acquire will be fire, one of the rarest. The hooded man administers a healing potion into the girl's mouth, while Xiao Qing is about to evolve to level 5. Her soul expands in all directions, and when both events occur simultaneously, a bright red energy radiates through the forest, and Xiao Ling awakens from the coma. The village celebrates with joy, but the hooded man is alarmed by her rapid awakening, indicating extraordinary talent. To celebrate the girl's awakening, the village organizes a grand feast with plenty of food for the soldiers. However, Xiao Ling seems not to be enjoying it. She acts as a spy, trying to gather as much information about the soldiers as possible. She questions the reason for their presence there, and Yan, the hooded man, 
explains that they are investigating mutated monsters in the city. Xiao Ling tries to confuse him, saying that no one in the village has seen a mutant beast, but he responds that the satellite used to track mana beasts detected a presence there. The protagonist is interested in the satellite, and asks for more information. Yen explains that the satellite can only detect abnormalities in certain places, and the information is not precise, but due to the extreme concentration of mana in the area, it began pointing there. The protagonist suspects that this is the result of his fight with the axe-headed snake, but now, with the fog, it will be difficult to find it. However, there is still a chance of being discovered, and if that happens, he will have to fight. Xiao Ling's grandfather talks to Yan about taking her for treatment after the mission, and they continue. Entering the forest and lost in the mist, they realize they are walking in circles and being watched by animals. The protagonist recognizes that Yen is a strong man and already has a plan to deal with them. Deeper into the forest, they hear howls in the distance and prepare, frightened. Like a lion attacking its prey, the wolf captures the army captain, who fires shots from special weapons while Yen kicks the wolf, causing it to release the captain. The wolf, not killed by the attack, returns and deeply wounds Yen before disappearing into the fog. The raccoon also attacks, and its strength allows it to make several cuts on the soldiers. The soldier fires a penetrating bullet at the raccoon, causing a huge explosion, but when the smoke clears, they see the pack of wolves protecting it from the blast. Everyone is extremely scared, and the protagonist, although previously human, is determined to eliminate this group. However, something strange happens. Yen begins to generate lightning around him and orders everyone to move as far away as possible. The soldiers, now gravely injured and furious with the monsters that survived the major attacks, carry the bodies of six of their friends. They leave the forest miserably, while the protagonist, concerned about the humans, plans to evolve to a point where they can no longer defeat him. He asks Xiao Qing about the whereabouts of her sister's body, which apparently is being transported by car to their base. Interestingly, the sister's body awakened the fire attribute, just like Xiao Qing. The guards are enchanted by her, watching her intently. However, she suddenly falls asleep with her head against the glass, leading them to debate whether to call her the sleeping girl or sleeping beauty. It seems that Xiao Qing cannot control her sister's body for long. The protagonist decides to give her the essence of life to extend the control time and accelerate her evolution. The wolves return from battle, carrying their raccoon friend, who is seriously injured. The protagonist realizes that that Yen is formidable, as most beasts would have been destroyed by a single attack from him. To please his subordinates, he creates a small lake for them to recover. Although not as good as the Ling Underground River, which contains a strong amount of aura, the lake helps heal their wounds. Thanks to Yuzi's roots, which absorb the aura from the river, the main trunk has grown significantly in just 10 days. The Ling Underground River is where a strong amount of concentrated aura is contained and should only be used by monsters. Xiao Ling arrives at the Institute of the Extraordinary, where she is greeted by the association president, who is interested in her strength level. The president talks with Yen, who is quite injured after entering the protagonist's forest. Yen files a report, and the president decides to classify the area as yellow code, indicating that it is not so dangerous. Yen also mentions Xiao Ling and suggests that the new generation of extraordinaries may be the strongest of all. Explained briefly, Yellow code is one of the three security codes, green for areas inhabited by humans, yellow for areas with some danger requiring vigilance, and red for high-risk areas where survival is uncertain. There are also forbidden territories for life, such as the Bermuda Triangle, which was already dangerous before the energy crisis. Back in the forest, we witness a confrontation between a badger and a fox. Due to the level difference, the fox knocks down the badger with a slap. The resilient badger gets up furiously, but the protagonist intervenes to break up the fight. He feels safe for now, as no additional soldiers have been sent. His wolves bring offerings, and he gains evolutionary points by finishing off the prey. He realizes the advantage of having creatures hunting for him, allowing him to evolve effortlessly. He allows the wolves to feed on the captured prey, while the fox abstains to maintain her tough stance. The monkey, on the other hand, eagerly eats the protagonist's leaves, which annoys him, but he accepts. With the accumulated points, the protagonist decides to enhance his branches, which now number 250, and gains a new paralysis ability. He tests the ability on the badger, which seems to work for a while but is not very effective. Xiao Qing explains that badgers are immune to poison. The protagonist reflects on the potential of Xiao Ling, who has just awakened the fire element, and Xiao Qing, who already possesses strong spiritual strength and has the ability to evolve even further with his sap. He anticipates that soon he will create a powerful being, a fusion of animals and humans.
Xiao Qing prepares for an exam that will determine if she will become an extraordinary. She is ready to face anyone who tries to interfere with her path. The Institute of the Extraordinary is compared to a college in this world, where those who awaken spiritual powers are sent to train and perfect themselves. Functioning almost like an underground city, the institute is populated by teachers who are graduated extraordinaries, resembling the hunter exam. The director emphasizes in his lecture the need for human evolution to ensure the survival of future generations. Institute candidates must undergo admission tests, the first being a spiritual pressure test that measures each one's spiritual energy. Yen Lengling impresses everyone by reaching 2,000 spiritual energy, a ranking considered superior. However, Shaoling exceeds all expectations by reaching 6,054 causing the measuring machine to explode. Candidates with a level above 100 are referred to specific test fields, and Yen is responsible for the upper-level ranking test. The challenge is simple. If anyone can touch him, they all pass. Despite the collective effort, Yen remains undefeated until Xiaoling, using her fire power, almost manages to touch him before being betrayed by a classmate. Remembering her master's words, she quickly grabs this girl by the head and throws her to the ground, with every intention of killing her prepares an attack that at the last second is prevented from hitting by the teacher. After the incident, Xiao Ling returns to the forest in spiritual form and reports the events to the protagonist, who is impressed with the outcome, as she will now have private lessons. He also learns that all the residents of the Van village have moved to the city. Now he will be able to expand the territory even further without worrying about the presence of humans over time. During the winter, Yuzi further strengthens his branches and, despite the boredom, knows that soon he will face new challenges. In the northwest region, at an energy crystal mine, a group of scouts is clearing the area of monsters until they come across a silver centipede. Meanwhile, the protagonist in the forest is close to reaching the limit of evolution, only needing to strengthen his eight roots. He fears that upon reaching this level, the energy he emits may reveal his location to humans, something he never feared before. As he was once a human himself, Yu Zi knows their destructive potential. Xiao Qing brings news from the Institute of the Extraordinary. A squad sent to the region was decimated by the centipede, whose strength is almost 120,000, far beyond the usual power of the mutant beasts in the area. Extraordinaries have been sent to deal with the threat, but the battle will not be easy. The protagonist is surprised to learn that humans have discovered the spiritual crystals and are using them to accelerate their evolution. He feared that upon reaching level 3 of the Extraordinaries, he could offer peace to humans, but now sees that this may not be possible due to their rapid evolution. The Centipede, a level 2 Extraordinary, has already wiped out almost all the troops, which is alarming, as not even the protagonist is at that level. He suspects that the Centipede may have the ability to steal the power of others. Xiao Ling, dressed in her school uniform, asks her master for permission to investigate the northwest region and questions how the centipede was not detected earlier. He suggests that the centipede may have a cloaking ability or that the mine itself is the cause of its presence. Back in the forest, a flying rooster captures the ant queen and throws her near the protagonist, attracting an entire swarm. After exterminating the insects, Yuzi finally accumulates enough points to evolve his roots, but forgets the intense pain that accompanies evolution. The badger, after sharing food with squirrels, is attacked by a giant creature and almost killed. The wolves find him and bring him back to the tree, where the protagonist uses his essence of life to heal him. The protagonist realizes the danger of letting extremely evolved monsters roam free and orders his animals to search and kill the creature. Before he can act, Xiao Qing brings more news. The spiritual stones can isolate spiritual energy, which explains why the centipede defeated everyone. This poses a major problem. Yu Zi, Questioning the origin of the Ling Underground River's spiritual energy, suspects that underground stones may be providing this energy. This theory is reinforced by the possibility that the monster that attacked the badger may have come from this energy source. To investigate, he devises a plan with his companions. The wolves are tasked with tracking the origin of the monster, the birds with finding entrances, and Xiao Qing with exploring the underground tunnels. Upon entering the tunnels, Xiao Qing discovered that they were filled with the protagonist's roots, and as she advanced deeper into the tunnels, Xiao Qing encountered hundreds of energy crystals and heard a powerful cry coming from inside the cave, a cry with overwhelming celestial strength. As she approached, she saw a giant turtle sleeping beside a blood herb, a treasure the turtle used to accelerate its evolution. Xiao Qing was discovered by the turtle, but her attacks did not cause any damage. Using her telekinesis, Xiao Qing stole the blood herb, initiating a battle. She attempted to use levitated stones against the turtle, which responded with a powerful kick on the ground 
causing an earthquake and destroying the mine. Xiao Qin tried to flee to her master, but was stopped by the turtle, which created an earth prison. Although Xiao Qin could pass through, the blood herb she carried could not. At the critical moment, the badger, previously humiliated by the turtle, returned to the fight, driven by hatred. He attacked the turtle with speed and fury, but could not penetrate its tough skin. Each of the turtle's attacks was lethal, but the badger, known for its territorial and vengeful nature, did not give up. At the height of his fury, the badger awakened electric powers, but still was no match for the turtle. When all seemed lost, Xiao Qing's master, like a black dragon made of roots, intervened. He formed a fearsome creature with his roots and transferred his core to it. Facing the turtle, Yu Zi confirmed his suspicions. As it evolved, the turtle used the minerals to conceal its aura. He praised the badger for its bravery and took over the fight, launching a frontal attack that broke the turtle's horns. After tending to the injured badger, he confronted the turtle and, with a few attacks, defeated it, gaining 8,000 evolution points. Yu Zi, now excited by the discovery of the cave full of energy crystals, created a tunnel and an underground shelter so that his animals could benefit from the stones and cultivate even more power. After a day of collection, the protagonist accumulated enough minerals for his evolution. With the renewal of his aura, the mutant birds that resisted the cold and did not migrate like common birds were exterminated. All the forest animals began to be pursued and captured by Yu Zi's expansive roots, which now extended beyond the mountain. Yu Zi assumed a new physical and spiritual form, transforming into a huge white tree. With the ability to control the earth element, Yu Zi could create a maze of thorns around him. His regeneration also improved significantly. Even if his entire body were destroyed, he could fully restore himself from a few remaining roots, and his mere presence caused the vegetation around him to flourish. The birds warned of the presence of a suspicious target, which was subdued miles away. The cow, attracted by a plant that grew on top of Yu Zi, consumed the rock flower, a product of Yuzi's excess energy, and instantly evolved into a level 9 mutant bison. Most surprisingly, the creature acquired the ability to speak. With the elevation to level 9, the creature's spiritual consciousness expanded. The firewolf, nearing level 9, was also about to awaken its consciousness if it continued to cultivate well. Meanwhile, Yuzi continued to explore the cave and mine energy crystals. Xiao Qi, in Shaoling's body, demonstrated remarkable feats at the academy. The professor summoned Xiao Ling to reveal a new discovery, a monster with DNA from both human and wolf, a completely new form of life. The experiment presented turned out to be a mistake. Human regenerative cells cannot withstand the invasion of werewolf cells. The scientist, seeking to help humanity in decline ascend in this new world, conducts risky experiments. A new group of volunteers willing to sacrifice themselves for the experiment is on the way, and the scientist is seeking a life form with super regeneration to complete his project. Shaoling, remembering her master, fears for what might happen to him. In the middle of the protagonist's forest, a squad of extraordinary scouts the area. The bespectacled boy is apprehensive, fearing the stories of people getting lost and dying in the mountain. But the scarred man reassures the group, trusting in Qian Qin. They are there not to subdue monsters, but to collect herbs. Qian Qin signals the approach of something, and through the mist, they spot two large eyes watching. What seemed to be a threat is just a kitten, easily subdued. The journey continues until Qian Qin alerts to a real danger. A white tiger with blue eyes attacks ferociously, eliminating the scarred man. The group tries to fight, but is easily overpowered, leaving only Qian Qin. In desperation, Qian Qin is saved by black tentacles that capture the tiger, and she faints. Back in the protagonist's clearing, the tiger is surrounded by the forest animals. Yuzi uses a new ability that, in addition to evolving creatures, makes them subconsciously obey him. The once ferocious tiger becomes docile quickly. Curious about the effect of sap on humans, Yuzi uses Qian Qin and subjects her to the sap. She begins to speak of a destroyed world dominated by giant trees, where everything is controlled by the great tree. The sap not only works on humans but also makes them see Yu Zi as a god. He inquires about her ability, and she mentions having a sixth sense and intuition, which makes Yu Zi laugh, considering it a minor skill. He releases her, and tells her she can stay to take care of the animals. She hesitates, but the sap makes her accept immediately. Yu Zi instructs her to praise him repeatedly and then orders her to undress, but she doesn't obey. There seems to be a limit to the effect of the sap on humans. He injects the sap into the other two captured men, and builds a small house for them to live in. Yuzi's clearing is transforming. Vegetation grows rapidly, 
There is a lake where animals can bathe and heal wounds. An underground tunnel provides access to the mines. And now there is a house where humans will live. After enhancing his Earth ability, the protagonist can now move freely around the world. He has accumulated almost 13,500 evolution points after defeating the turtle and intends to use these points to further elevate the level of the Earth element. The number of points gained when defeating a creature depends on its spiritual power. For example, defeating a creature with 80,000 points of spiritual power would earn him 8,000 evolution points. To test his evolved ability, he creates four pillars that elevate the animals standing on them, including the badger, which accidentally falls and injures itself, continuing to reinforce the earth element. He alters the structure of the location he's in, with each root of his body functioning like the turtle's shell. Using all simultaneously, he can lift lands hundreds of meters high, like bones forming a protective structure. Meanwhile, in another part of the world, a tourist watches a tsunami approaching the sea, bringing with it under water monsters devastating the city. A third order transcendentalist serpent emerges from the sea, causing despair in the White House, as its power is estimated between 170,000 and 250,000. Three nuclear missiles were launched, but only one hit the serpent, which submerged again. Humanity faces a crisis against the aquatic monsters, threatening the extinction of the human species. Back in the protagonist's clearing, the humans added to the group are adapting well, taking on roles as cooks, teachers, and even fighting against the animals. They live in harmony with the forest animals and fear that the government may try to exterminate the conscious giant tree if they discover its existence. To protect the beasts, they teach human language and writing. The protagonist agrees with this approach, and Xiao Qing informs about the human situation and the threat of the sea monsters. The protagonist is concerned about the possibility of sea creatures evolving and overcoming radiation, becoming an even greater problem for humanity. He emphasizes the need for strong allies and the accelerated construction of an underground kingdom. He captures creatures from the forest and throws them into a pit, using his sap to evolve them and expand his army. The porcupine evolves well, and the crocodile becomes an elder crocodile, one of the most dangerous species, according to Xiao Qin. Fearing to lose her position, the fire fox challenges the crocodile to combat, initiating a battle among the forest monsters. The duel between the red fox and the elder crocodile intensifies. The now level 9 red fox rushes at the crocodile. Even with all her speed, the fox still has her paw caught by the crocodile, which spins and violently crashes to the ground. But using all her strength, the fox manages to pry open the crocodile's mouth, spitting a blast of fire into it. This blast is so strong that it explodes the area around a bit, but the crocodile still seems to come out intact from the attack. The two opponents look at each other and smile as if respecting each other's strength. The protagonist is impressed and happy since now he will have two great generals in his army. Life in the forest forest improves significantly with the help of the humans, who not only mitigate food shortages but also teach their language to the monsters, facilitating communication among them. ING, the most active human, stands out for his contributions, including making clothes for the group. ING approaches the protagonist but is stopped by the monsters, like a commoner trying to reach a king. UZ ends up letting him pass and listen to what he desires. He wants to join the tree army, the protagonist refuses, and when Xiao Qing asks why, he says that humans are rebellious by nature. If you end up giving too much to them, they may end up getting spoiled. And when you stop giving them those things, they will be the first to betray you. Xiao Qing reports that the silver centipede was captured by humans and is being used in experiments, which concerns the protagonist for how quickly it was subdued. However, it's not just human growth that is accelerated. All the animals in the forest are evolving significantly, increasing UZ's army's power. He decides to release the animals so they can evolve on their own, and only animals that can already protect themselves will be released for training. The fox, now called Nine Tails, the bison, renamed Demon Bull, and the white tiger, keeping its name, and the crocodile, are selected as the new commanders. They are tasked with exploring new locations and acquiring dominating forces. At the Academy of the Extraordinaries, the Silver Centipede survives despite having its head separated from its body, and Shaoling reflects on the situation. Meanwhile, the protagonist continues to develop his skills, enhancing the Willow Blade, an attack that creates a distant blade, now capable of cutting even his own sturdy roots. The evolution of the protagonist and his allies' abilities continues. With most abilities already at level 2, he encounters the high cost of evolving the main root and chooses to improve another cheaper ability. The mist, now enhanced, allows him to create small dragons that, although frightening the clearing residents, are a sign of his growing power. A light sprouts from the ground. When Yuzi goes to look, he meets Xiaoling evolving, 
surrounded by a purple centipede, indicating that she absorbed the centipede from the Extraordinaries Institute. While her spirit evolves in the forest, her body undergoes a similar transformation in the Institute, driven by the Fire Spirit Stones. The completed evolution gives Xiao Qing a more powerful appearance, with a centipede accompanying her, while Xiao Ling, not being controlled, goes back to sleep. Xiao Qing demonstrates her new strength by destroying the protagonist's roots, using the centipede as a weapon. The protagonist, in turn, showcases his new abilities by materializing monsters made of mist. Xiao Qing warns that humans could track these monsters back to their creator, but with the use of a spirit stone, he could conceal that connection. By merging a mist beast with a stone, he creates a more realistic and powerful dragon monster, a significant advancement in his combat capabilities. A war between humans and aquatic monsters begins, with the monsters advancing relentlessly on one side, and humans using all their artillery to defend themselves. They use everything they can, from tanks, mortars, jets, missiles, but nothing seems to work. The monsters continue to destroy them like insects, in the trenches the only thing humans can do is survive. However, maybe they are not even capable of that. A second level coral crab appears. This creature is so large that it easily destroys buildings. Humans look at that impending destruction without a glimmer of hope. All of them are seeing their homes being brutally crushed by these monsters. In the clearing, Xiao Qing says she has a surprise for the protagonist. She asks him to send one of the falcons to a specific location. When the falcon arrives there and meets with Xiaoling, he becomes extremely emotional since the last time he met her. She was lying in a hospital bed in a coma. She gives him something to take to the master, and when he opens this mysterious box, a small insect is found almost dead. This mutant ant was the result of the sacrifice of millions of other ants, a truly important experiment that was only given to her because she was almost dead. Being an experiment, she has several abilities superior to normal ants. The protagonist intends to awaken the potential since he can see that she is a great blessing in disguise. The life essence he intends to give her is so powerful that it could explode her just by touching. So he dilutes it in water and gives it to the ant, which quickly awakens. But not only does she awaken but also evolves. A green light emanates from her, and the result of the evolution is Barris. We know that this little ant is going to be awesome. The protagonist, to test her abilities, attacks her using his branches, and she skillfully dodges all the attacks, even managing to defend against them. She reveres the tree and pledges allegiance to it using telepathy to communicate. The protagonist is even impressed. A level 5 monster already has telepathy, not even the white tiger, which is level 9, has learned this skill yet. The little ant is already intimidating the tiger, making him run away and cry like a scared kitten. The protagonist says that he will be the fifth general in command, and that he will be sent underground to train, also giving the little ant a new name based on her incredible speed. Her name is now Flash. Xiao Qing says that Flash saw the death of countless other ants when she was being tested in the human laboratory, and that she would not be able to suppress her anger against humans, as she grows stronger. But for you Z, that's okay, as long as she doesn't oppose him. In a distant swamp, the alligator that has hunted countless victims evolves. However, he is not happy with the evolution. Evolving in such a place would clearly attract human attention. The satellite manages to track his location. A power fluctuation of 24,000. The commander orders them to send the coordinates to the air troops. Several troops immediately appear on the scene, surrounding the crocodile that continues to evolve. But he manages to take care of the troops immediately. With one attack the humans lose communication with the planes. Xiao Qing warns her master that humans have discovered the crocodile's location. Due to the last attack of ancestral beasts, humans fear has increased, and they have put the crocodile's danger level as high as possible. The protagonist, to be able to help, calls the peregrine falcons, he tells them to escort the crocodile until he can return, and if necessary, even bringing down the planes. The combat helicopters unleash fire bursts against the crocodile, while in a distant plane, they plan how they will manage to kill it. After the recent attacks with ancient monsters, their fear of the crocodile surviving and becoming stronger is immense. They plan to finish it off right there. The crocodile uses its tail to hurl stones at the planes shooting at it, and with their vision obstructed, the pilots can only retreat. The crocodile attempts to flee, but humans use bombs around it to hinder its movement. The crocodile's body begins to stiffen and is bombarded by several missiles. Everyone witnessing that scene holds their breath, as if awaiting victory. Just when it seems to be the end of the crocodile, humans detect eight very fast approaching figures, and in just a few moments, humans lose communication with all the planes. The humans' plan to exterminate the crocodile failed. The only thing they managed to capture was images of who destroyed the plane, 
the peregrine falcons that are at the top of the food chain even before evolution. They are frightened since the level of their air force doesn't even come close to the level of these falcons. The elder crocodile manages to return to his master's clearing, completely injured, increasing the monster's fury against humans even more. The protagonist soon notices a drone hidden near the crocodile and destroys it immediately. Analyzing the crocodile's body, he finds several wounds and holes. Human projectiles are strong enough to penetrate even its thick skin layer, and this is not the worst problem. The missiles also left the crocodile's muscle stiffened, so it could hardly move. Now, face to face with his master, the crocodile hands him a snake egg. He says that the mother of this egg had awakened the ice element, and that the egg also possessed it. He also found a spiritual ice grass next to the egg, leaving even the protagonist amazed at the things he can hide in his mouth. The protagonist feels a beautiful rigid cold from the egg, with so much potential that it could even surpass the existence of the axe-headed snake. The humans analyzing the drone footage catch a glimpse of a moving tree, and that's enough for them to send an air force to investigate the mountain. Immediately raising the area level to red, they are determined to eliminate the crocodile and any dangerous thing on that mountain. The army, which quickly set up a fort near the mountain, gather their forces and are heavily armed, preparing for an attack. Observing them from afar, the new family member, the flash ant, seems to nurture more and more hatred for humans. Yuzi instructs the crocodile to hide in the midst of the foggy mountain. There, he will create a spiritual lake with the protagonist's life essence. The animals seem to be very worried about him, but he kindly tells them that he will soon be better and will play with them. As the crocodile heads toward his goal, the protagonist devises a plan to eliminate the humans who now know about the crocodile's existence, using the mist to attract the attention of a soldier, causing him to distance himself from the rest of the group, ends up causing internal conflict, and in the moment of opening, he uses the mist to attack. Due to the commotion, all soldiers leave their tents and are faced with a mist dragon. Startled, they begin firing at the mist, which has no effect. Quickly they think of using the fire extinguisher to dispel the mist. But before they can execute anything, they are violently struck on the head. When the humans look back, they are confronted by another human attacking them. And coming right behind, the flash ant approaches. The massacre begins. The once isolated mountain begins to be exposed to the world. The protagonist knows that he cannot hide forever, so he will use the terror of the mountains to keep everyone away from there. The man who was caught in the illusions earlier will be saved only to spread the terror of the mist beasts. Xiao Qing says that the next army that comes there will not be small, and the protagonist responds that he is prepared for war. Soon rumors about the mountain began to spread. The crocodile, who set up an even larger spiritual lake, relaxes with the other animals. The protagonist managed to evolve his branches to level 3. Now, in addition to the pink coloration, they have become much stronger and can multiply at the tips to grasp things. However, the growth rate is still not enough. Before, the protagonist had time to evolve. But with the war looming between him and the humans, that time has decreased considerably. He evolves a few more branches and then asks the crocodile what he found in his explorations in the river. The crocodile says that even with his strength, it was still an unpredictable place. The water had the ability to suppress spiritual fluctuations. But even with that, he still managed to sense the presence of a being that surpassed second-level transcendence. In City Z, the soldier who was previously lost in the middle of the forest is now in a state of insanity. They can hardly extract any useful information from him. The older and more enraged man says that he will personally lead the battle against the mountain. He will gather the extraordinaries who are the Federation's ten heroes to go after the crocodile. Returning to the crocodile's conversation with the protagonist, he says that he didn't go very deep, but he felt a very strong pressure coming from the depths. He believes that there are not only second-level monsters but also third-level monsters. But this doesn't scare the protagonist, it only instigates him. He plans to join the river with his mountain, thus leveraging his arsenal infinitely in the fight against humans. The crocodile tells him to send the badger and the boar to conquer the mountain first. As if he goes, the humans will detect his presence. The protagonist leaves the crocodile in charge of this hunt and gives him some life essence so that nothing happens to them. Meanwhile, the underground city project he is working on progresses rapidly. After finishing the arrangements, the city's base is practically formed. The city has three floors, and each opening is connected with an underground tunnel. Beneath the city is a river, and several bridges have been erected to facilitate access to the rooms. While he is talking with his buddy, Xiao Qing calls him, saying that the snake egg is about to hatch. Surrounded by a bright light, the egg cracks, blue sparks emanate from where it is, and a beautiful white serpent appears. The snake is born with excellent abilities that make the protagonist quite happy. On the other hand, 
things were happening on the other side of the mountain. The extermination unit arrives at the mountain they have to conquer. Flash, who is the fastest among them, shoots ahead while the others eliminate the weaker enemies. Several days pass, and what happened on that mountain was a massacre. The protagonist gained 18,000 evolution points in a short time. Not far away, Xiao Qing meets the most beloved gorilla in cinema, King Kong. A huge and majestic gorilla, he detects her presence and throws a huge rock in her direction, which is easily split into several pieces by her centipede. She defeats the gorilla easily and takes him still alive to UZ. He wants to try to control this gorilla, but she warns that he is different from the other animals he has tamed so far. He could end up getting out of control. He knows that gorillas are normally more intelligent because they are close to humans, and that if a gorilla ends up acquiring human intelligence, the evolution of the species would take him to a completely different level. If this evolved gorilla were to join his team, his strength would increase even more. The gorilla wakes up and goes after the protagonist, who uses only one of his branches to stop him. He gives two choices to the gorilla, surrender now or die. The gorilla, who has already learned to speak, surrenders without a second thought. The protagonist ends up naming him King Kong and gives him some life essence to evolve. The gorilla, who was initially reddish, grows and gains a black and white coloration on his fur. But even though the gorilla is quite strong, he is still not worthy of becoming one of the nine generals. Yuzi then orders him to call others of his species. He lets out such a powerful scream that it breaks the ground around him. Gorillas from all corners hear his call and come to him immediately. Realizing that he hit the jackpot in the blink of an eye, an army of gorillas appears in front of him. Already on the mountain that is being subdued, Flash fights a level 7 praying mantis. Even though Flash is level 6, he still manages to handle creatures level 8. However, this praying mantis is giving him a hard time. The two clash violently. Flash, who praises his strength, sees that he can be a great addition to his master's army. And using a bit of the paralyzing toxin from the tree, he manages to mobilize the praying mantis. The demonic bull appears, and with him, the dawn. They decide to end the hunt for now and return to the clearing. Already in the clearing, the protagonist spent the day perfecting himself and further improving his branches. He sees the white wolf running in the distance, and as he gets closer, he spits out the blue praying mantis. Its characteristics are all about the wind, making it a great assassin. He praises the white wolf who is quite happy and puts the praying mantis in the spiritual pool. It tries to escape but is easily subdued. The demonic bull speaks of his concern for the fox that has not yet returned from her training and asks the master to go find her. Initially, the protagonist does not let her go as the demonic bull is not yet at the fox's level. However, he insists and asks to train using the spiritual stones. After three days with the help of the white tiger and the flash, he managed to further enhance all his branches. He also discovered that if he injects spiritual power into the branches, he will split into several branches. To test this, he injects spiritual power into all the branches. In doing so, he attracts the attention of all humans and animals nearby. Like a natural phenomenon, all his branched branches spread across the sky, shining in distinct colors, forming almost an aurora borealis. The humans there, while finding it beautiful, also find it terrifying. Flash, passing by nearby, ends up having a conversation with the humans, not hiding the anger he feels towards them. After retracting the branches, he sees that the rate of spiritual power that this ability uses is too high for him now. Returning to the underground city, the gorillas are now helping to assemble the houses at a scandalous speed. The whole place is being filled with constructions. The protagonist is even impressed that the city builder managed to get order among the gorillas and tells him to conduct military training with them later. Suddenly an earthquake occurs. The protagonist soon realizes that it is like the time Xiao Qing advanced. Only this time it was the demonic bull who advanced. A strong light is seen from one of the holes. The bull, close to awakening, eats a flower from the tree, and the awakening is finally completed. A great explosion occurs around him, destroying the old houses that the humans inhabited. With fur covering his neck completely and an even more majestic pair of horns, the imposing bull approaches. The air around him is twisting, and when the protagonist checks his abilities, he realizes that now the bull can control the gravity around him. To test his new abilities, the praying mantis and the flash join forces to fight him. The praying mantis, driven by the will to escape from there, quickly advances with Flash towards the bull. The blue meteor and the golden Flash circulate around him quickly. The animals nearby can't even see them because of how fast they are. They attack simultaneously, and they even think they manage to hit him. But in a simple movement, all the gravity around him increases, throwing them violently to the ground. The bull asks if Flash is okay, and he replies that it was nothing serious, just had some organs crushed, 
dislocated some joints, broke his arms and legs. Yuzi restores their vitality. The praying mantis continues trying to escape and continues failing miserably. Now that he has finally awakened, he is free to go look for the fox. A few kilometers away, the human army is preparing for another attack. They certainly still fear the crocodile, but with the arrival of transcendent forces, they believe the tide may turn. Meanwhile, at the Transcendental Research Institute, Shaoling tests her powers on the physical body. Using the powers of merging physical and spiritual abilities, the improvement in her flames was absurd, managing to completely destroy a training room made of super alloy. Shaoling ends up meeting other extraordinaries, and just her presence impresses one of the men there. He tries to approach her, but he is automatically cut off. His colleague explains that he is the son of a very rich man who spent millions of reis on spiritual herbs for him to transcend, and he ended up becoming the general of one of the battalions due to his performance, and he was there to recruit Shaoling. But before recruiting her, she needs to pass a test by fighting him. A rain of lightning forms around his body, while Shaoling summons a fire butterfly. Until then, he thinks the fire butterfly is harmless and plans to attack her with all he has. However, when the butterfly comes into contact with him, his whole body starts to catch fire. He is startled by the lethality of the butterfly, which only makes him more enraged. But before he could attack her, a rain of fire butterflies invades the room like a flaming tsunami. The herd of fire butterflies clashes with Li Hao's fists causing an explosion that spreads throughout the entire room. In the end, when the dust settles, the only one standing there is Shaoling. Li Hao falls to the ground, giving up the battle. Almost everyone in the room celebrates Shaoling's victory, but what she didn't know is that this fight was entirely filmed by men in suits who were present there. Two men of higher rank analyze the fight. Shaoling's terrifying abilities certainly catch their attention, so much so that they decide to keep all information about her confidential. On the protagonist's mountain, his beasts continue to help him level up. Roars of beasts can be heard all around. Meanwhile, Yuzi began to strengthen himself, waiting for each part of his body to reach its limit to advance to the third stage. However, what he didn't realize was an evil energy forming in the deepest part of the cave. Due to the spiritual stones that mitigated the energy, the only one able to sense it was Qian Qin. She approaches the cave entrance where she feels the energy getting stronger when suddenly, red tentacles grab her and pull her into the cave. In her last strength, she tries to call Yu Zi, who wakes up from his state of concentration. Yu Zi searches the entire clearing but cannot find Qian Qin. He uses his mist sensing ability and detects her in the deepest part of the cave. Getting closer, he finds a mutant plant absorbing Qian Qin as nutrients. This plant is precisely that blood flower they had found. It managed to hide and evolve on its own somehow. It emits a hostile aura to the protagonist and several subsequent attacks, which don't do much. He dodges them all and uproots the plant from the ground, killing it. By defeating the plant, he manages to steal its ability. He finds it strange because he has already killed countless creatures, but this is the first time he has stolen an ability from one. Maybe if he hunts mutant plants around, he can absorb their abilities. When he looks at Qian Qin's state, he sadly sees that she has already died. The blood plant wanted to become a parasite in Qian Qin to control her freely. To pay homage to her death, Yu Zi decides to bury her. As he approaches, Qian Qin's body begins to glow. A crystal stone forms around her with an intense red glow. Qian Qin emerges in a totally different form. Roots and leaves spread across her body fused to her skin. Qian Qin underwent a symbiosis with the mutant plant. Now in this vegetative state, she doubts if she is still human. And with a little joke, Yu Zi replies that she is not. The protagonist doesn't know which side she wants to be on, and questions if she could return to human society with this appearance. As an ally Yu Zi recruits Qian Qin to his team. Shivu has already been living among them for quite some time, immediately accepts the offer. On the other side of the mountain, the white tiger fights a rank 1 mutant chameleon but ends up losing and returning to its master. Flash questions that there are more trees in the area and the protagonist explains that it is due to his new ability. After killing the mutant plant, he gained the ability to create trees, but the explanation is quickly interrupted with Flash feeling a presence and swiftly moving where it is. The new presence he felt was Qian Qin, now totally different due to her symbiosis. Yu Zi explains that she is there a new companion and that she has been selected as the sixth general. Flash, who hates humans, opposes his master's idea, but as a simple threat that makes his whole body tremble, he quickly understands the mistake. The protagonist understands that he hates humans, but she is different. He says to get to know her better, and who knows, maybe change his mentality in the future.
Deeper into the forest, a group of mercenaries invade the mountain. They search for clues to the crocodile's whereabouts. When they come across Qian Qin in the fog, she is collecting fruits and has not yet noticed the presence of the humans when she is attacked by one of them and has her head violently thrown against a tree. Due to their wickedness and greed, the humans intend to sell her. But before that, the men in the group intend to do things with her. The woman in the group ends up stopping them. But out of envy for Qian Qin's body, she tries to attack her. Qian Qin, who does not want to die, uses her vines and impales the man who attacked her earlier. They feel the strong energy that Qian Qin exhales, but realize that due to her recent transformation, she cannot control herself very well. They all move for an attack until they are intercepted by a golden ray. One of their heads is quickly severed. Flash passing by threatens the humans, who even tried to flee but are killed as soon as they move. He finishes off the woman and goes after the blonde who also is unable to do anything. But in his last moments, he uses a grenade capable of intercepting Flash. The woman who had not died in the first attack moves to attack him. And in the last second Qian Qin saves Flash from death. Qian Qin cries like a baby for killing a human and is reprimanded by Flash who can't stand to hear the crying. He says that humans only understand the true value of life when they kill other humans, and that if she had been captured her fate would have been worse than his. Returning to base, Qian Qin tells the last human companion he must start making plans. Unlike her, he still has a family waiting for him, making it difficult to take a side. When this wave of monsters spread, the death rate in inland cities or coastal cities increased considerably. This time was called the Era of Darkness by humans. Studying the situation of the oceans, they discover that spiritual energy, like oxygen, can be toxic, and at the bottom of the sea, the amount of spiritual energy is only increasing, causing marine monsters that live there to rise to shallower areas. Weaker monsters that lived on the surface find themselves obliged to migrate to the coast, encountering humans. If this continues, the inevitable attack of the sea beasts could lead humans to extinction. These attacks are likely to worsen, as a second spiritual tide is approaching, just like the first one that evolved living creatures into monsters, the second one will evolve the monsters even more. Meanwhile, the protagonist leads Xiao Qing to an underground location, using his roots that can penetrate up to 10 kilometers deep. Arriving there, they find a pure source of spiritual energy, and he says that a new era is coming for the monsters. Meanwhile, humans see a recording made by one of the humans that Flash killed. In this recording they discover that now monsters can talk and that there is a master behind them, probably associated with the attack attack on the helicopters on the day of the crocodile and the mist beasts. In the clearing, Yuzi discovers that humans have managed to create technology capable of bypassing detection by the mist, making things very problematic from now on. The crocodile warns that strange birds have appeared in the sky. These are the combat helicopters that fought against him before. Upon closer inspection, an entire army marches towards the mountain, helicopters, tanks, missile launchers, and millions of soldiers. However, what seems most dangerous are the transcendentals coming out of the plane. A genetically modified transcendental force with DNA from beasts, with the transcendental strength of the best academy students. The animals observing the army forming become apprehensive. Yuzi realizes that this army is not just to subjugate the crocodile. Five days ago, after watching the recording, humans believe that there may be other humans taming the mountain beasts. This attack, in addition to subjugating the beasts, is to find out if there is another organization controlling and modifying the monsters. In the scientist's laboratory, he managed to create an essence to make Shaoling's flames even stronger. However, the student indignant with the favoritism given to Shaoling enters the room with a scary look on her face. The attack planning continues. After that meeting, walls were built around the city. It is not known if they will be very useful, but at least they can already stop the weaker beasts. Shaoling walks quickly through the corridors of a hospital. When she enters the room, she sees the scientist lying in bed. He says that the girl ended up consuming the fire crystal, but as she had no affinity for fire, her body began to change. During the transformation she attacked the scientist almost killing him. After that, she was arrested by the army and is waiting to be placed on battlefields. The doctor who is in critical condition hands over half of the core he managed to protect to Shaoling. He asks her not to succumb to hatred and revenge. After having his last words attended to, he passes away, leaving Shaoling completely shaken and enraged. As she leaves the room, 
she is called to immediately go to the combat site in the Bayou Mountains. The extraordinary gather there listen attentively to the commands of their captain. This will be the first offensive of humans against the beasts of the forest. The goal is to eradicate all the powerful beasts that live in this mountain. Xiao Ling is called by one of the generals who commands the army. This general not only asks if she wants revenge against the mutant beasts that killed her sister but also wants to have her as a disciple. Yu Zi imagines that something would be natural since Xiao Ling is quite strong and having connections with important humans is also useful. He calls all the forest animals and explains that it will be a bloody battle, that many of them will die in the fight, but the sacrifice will enable the survivors to survive. On both sides, preparations for war are ready. But this war we will only see in the next video. Thank you for watching the legendary tree so far. If you like the video and subscribe to the channel, I'll do the next part soon. See you next time. Bye bye.